Hi, this is Anne with my final anagram on this week's Get Random Circles. Um, we have code here that says that we're supposed to have a variable center point and then call this function called Get Random Point to set it so that we can use it to draw circles in random locations. And frankly, <clears throat> I thought that this would be the step that everybody would get stuck at and might need some help. Um, so I'm going to take my time. There are two or three different ways to do this, and I'm going to try and make it as clear as I can. So the, the specification for get random location is that the values of x should range from 0 to the canvas width, and the values of y should range from 0 to the canvas height, and that we are supposed to be returning a point object that we declare inside our function. So um, Let's go take a look at the code. Now, we already are using a point object in this code, um, and, and it's initially set with an x and a y equal to zero. So, so if you recall, a point is a super simple object that has two properties, x and y, and we're using it to locate our circles on the, um, on the canvas grid. So, like always, um, when I have to write a new function, the first thing I'm going to do is write the function, get it working with the rest of my code, so that I know that when I start having my function do something different, that I'm, I'll be seeing the effect on my page. So, if I go over here, grab that function name, come over here, and simply, again, we have a function that takes no parameters and is supposed to return an object. So um, literally what I'm going to do is make the code work exactly the same way it did before, but do it by getting the point from this function as opposed to setting it down here. So um, this is called refactoring. All I'm going to do is take this declaration, move it upside here inside the function so that point is being declared inside the function, not as a global. And then down here, I'm going to take these two calculations, which again, I'm not changing. I'm just moving them. I'm going to move them in here. Um, I'm going to apply formatting just to make everything look neat. Neat code is happy code. And I'm going to return point. And um, if you'll pardon the sort of forced pun, the point of this function is, and of this whole exercise, is to let you know that a function can return a string, it can return a number, or it can return an object. And in this case, we just have the world's simplest object, which is a point with an x and y value. Now, <clears throat> all the code that I had before is inside get random location, but I'm not currently, um, I'm not currently using that code. And if I went to draw my circle, um, something disastrous would happen. Um, probably I would get no points because point is not defined and I'd be sending an undefined location into, um, into here. So rather than show you nothing happened, um, I'm going to fix that. My original code said I should be calling that variable center point. Um, you know, it isn't going to bother me if you call it random point. Random point, since that's what we're calling everything else. Um, no points off for having reasonable variable names. So random point, and again, I just do what I've done before, which is I assign to random point this value that's getting returned from this function. And down here, I need to hand the function an actual point, not one that's not defined. So this is not going to be very exciting when I, um, when I go back and I run my HTML. That'll save my, thank goodness, it saved my JavaScript. And if I go and I close the window I was using before and I open this one, 
Um, it should look just the way it did, except of course I'm getting random. Every time I draw this, I get random sizes. That's kind of cool, having an order like that. Um, <clears throat> okay, so that's not very exciting, um, but we have been told that we want X to vary from zero to the canvas width. And again, why type a line that you don't need to type? So I'm going to take this code up here that does a random calculation. Okay. And the only difference here is that the maximum value is canvas width. Um, it really should be canvas width plus one. Um, for the same reason that if I want to vary between 100, 0 and 100, this should be 101. But frankly, at the size of the canvas, um, there isn't a whole lot of difference in terms of visuals. So um, it wouldn't bother me if your solution just turns in canvas width here as, your, as the um, value that's the max. Because essentially that's what we're doing is we're saying take a value that runs from 0 to less than 1 and multiply it by this value, and that gets you values that are between 0 and this value. Um, same deal here. My y. The only thing different is that I'm supposed to be using the whole canvas height for my locations. We already know that the code that draws the circle works with this function. So now we just want to see if we're getting, um, if instead of getting all of our um, circles in a row, we get them in random locations. So I'm going to save this code. I'm going to come over to my running page. I'm going to shift refresh. And suddenly, I'm getting circles all over. Um, now, the last thing is to make it a little more entertaining. If I do 20 instead of 5, the picture will be a little bit prettier. And then clearly, I could have a better, prettier set of colors, something coordinated. Um, but you can see that the circles are getting pretty small. They're not ever getting huge because I'm limiting them to 100. But they are pretty much filling up all over the page. OK. So this code is working. And this is the simplest translation from where the code was to the code that, that needs to work. Now, but there are a couple of other things that you could do and that are perfectly valid solutions. One of them is that point doesn't have to have x and y values to start with. You can start through the magic of JavaScript by having point be an empty object, simply two curly brackets. And then, rather than resetting the values of x and y here, what you're doing is actually adding a property named x with this value and adding a property named y. And if I save that code, and I shift refresh, you'll see that it continues to work. Okay. The other thing that I can do um, is I don't have to necessarily um, have point defined at the top. I mean, one thing I could do is, um, let's see, get rid of point at the beginning, make these simple numbers, var x, and var y, okay, and then I can do this, <clears throat> yeah, just to make it clearer, <clears throat> I'm going to make those names a little bit longer. Then the x property gets the value of x location. <coughs> and the y property gets the value of y location. 
that's really not by any means um, my favorite solution. And also, it's not working. Parsing here. Got a little. Um, I think I'm missing the assignment here. So um, I can do this code in terms of x location just being an integer, y location being an integer, define the point at the at the end. And I can even, although personally, I don't encourage you to do this. This is also perfectly legal, is to write that code like that um, and, and essentially create the object in the process of returning it. But I got to tell you, probably my favorite solution, and I'm going to control Z back to it. Is that one where point is an object to start with it's empty and then as I compute these two values I just add properties to it um, I think that's nice it's super simple um, it works well and just to prove that I'm going to save this code and make sure that it's still working um, always good to make sure your code's still working okay and that's the end of get random location I hope that helps